Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is of me doing a lot of handyman work from electrical to plumbing in a $3 million house. Before we get into that, I have to ask you a question. Most of my views do not come from people who are getting into the handyman remodeling business. This question is for the few that watch my videos that are getting into the handyman and remodeling business. And I need to know if you are interested in things that I've learned to improve the success of my business. The original reason I made this YouTube channel was only to share my experience and things that I've learned along the way because it got to a certain point where I was I stopped increasing the amount of money that I was making and it got to a point where I had to think well is this really worth it and after a lot of research and some trial and error I was able to double that income mo like almost on a monthly basis if you are interested in that type of content give this video a thumbs up if you're not don't give it a thumbs up um, this video is going to get between five and seven thousand so it could be up to ten thousand views in one week if this video gets fifteen hundred likes within the first week I will put out some videos on things that I've learned that have drastically improved how much money I make. Another thing, at the end of this video, I'm going to show you what's inside this box. What's inside this box is my latest addition to the tool trailer. And you do not want to miss it. I'm going to everyone's favorite customer, a rich person's house. So this project today, actually I don't even know what it all is is for the customers that I installed the flat screen TVs for. I've also done quite a bit of other work. I think it involves changing light fixtures. And there could be a, a pig door. Hey piggy! About a month to two months ago, I posted a video about uh, called Handyman to the Rich and Famous. That uh, got a little bit of attention in the comments about how much I charged for adjusting the height of this specific light that you see me taking down right here. Well, the customer um, had their kids change bedrooms, as in the kids uh, wanted to sleep in a different bedroom. So they moved all the furniture and each kid has a specific light fixture that hangs from the ceiling. So I got called back to relocate the light fixtures from one room to the other. And that's what you see me doing right here is just pulling a light fixture down in one bedroom and moving it over to a bedroom across the hall. I get a lot of questions about this little screwdriver that I use whenever I'm doing electrical work. Uh, it's a Klein screwdriver and you can find it in the electrical tool section of both Lowe's and Home Depot. It's just a fast way to uh, screw and unscrew uh, light fixture screws and, and outlets and uh, kind of speeds things up. Installing light fixtures and ceiling fans is one of the most common handyman jobs that I get called to do. When I first started out, I was only charging $35 a light fixture, and that was about 12 years ago. Uh, nowadays, guys are getting anywhere between $85 and $100 for a light fixture, and $145 to $200 for a ceiling fan with a light kit. Okay, wasn't able to take you in with me, but one of the jobs I did was replacing the guts of a recessed uh, can, recessed lighting. Uh, the reason it kept overheating, it would only stay on for 15, 20 minutes. This is the heat sensor right here, and you can tell how crispy that is. Um, the reason it was overheating, it was packed full of insulation, as in all the cellulose insulation was packed tight around it. And it clearly states on it that um, insulation needs to be three inches away. So I replaced the guts of one, and on another one, I pulled down 
the can part <clears throat> and then pushed all the insulation back because all the wiring was still intact and had not yet gotten discolored but it was still um, turning off every 15-20 minutes now I'm going to take you in and just show you some of the other stuff I'm doing like a uh, what is it a drain stopper in a tub and clean two P traps and adjust a strike plate. I think that's it. That's all I think I'm doing for the day. Oop, leave my shoes outside. I gotta show you something. Hey little piggy. So this is what we got going on here is this tub thing is not not working right it's in there stripped crooked That's probably why we've got some blockages. What the heck is this thing? Get your gloves on. A new one. Okay. So this is a replacement and it's supposed to just screw right on in there. Universal for two different thread sizes. Probably ought to take it back off and clean this room. There's a lot of hard water deposits on there. Next item is a slow draining sink. So we're gonna, okay, of course, pop this P trap off here. Yeah, it looks pretty corroded up there. I didn't see any hair in there. But we'll pop the P trap off and see what we find. Next thing is this came off of this. So far I've just pulled this, this apart. It's covered in soap, so it's slippery. Barn doors. Holy cow. Wow. Holy cow. <laughs> this here, gotta light the pilot. Rarely are jobs this easy. But this thing just. Pilot burner is right back in there. Just like uh, starting up the pilot in a uh, hot water heater. So I'll keep the button pushed down until the thermal coupler switch has heated up. And then I'll let it go. 
and I'll flip the switch and test it. Someone is paying me to light the pilot light on their gas stove. I gotta make sure I turn this to on. There we go. That's your fire. Off. And on. So they said I could let this in. I think he wants to come in. He's a Face is a mess though. Gotta stay, gotta stay focused on work. <laughs> Even though I love to play with that little thing. So this is, uh, I think, my last item. I don't know if you guys can get a perspective of this. It's gonna tighten up the door strikes because. We've got air gap there. It's t it's touching fairly tight here, and then we've got more of a gap way up there. So the door is is well, it's warped. But when I pull it in, most of the daylight goes away except for a little bit in that corner. didn't remortise it uh, because what it does when I slide it back it actually bumps it out this way to make this strike plate closer to the door all right oh look at that beautiful a little bit down here and I can fix that nice so this was trapped behind this gasket shoved way in there like that. So what I did is I sliced it and popped it out. And we'll see if, see if it stays popped out. Okay, this is one of the closet lights that I replaced all the insides, the heat sensor, all the wiring, and the socket. This light has been on now for two hours and has not overheated and kicked off. And this is the other closet light that what I did is I pulled everything out, the big can, and got all the insulation pushed back out of the way and this light's been on for oh probably an hour and it hasn't kicked off yet i couldn't leave until i said hello to this little thing come here guy you got a messy snout hey come here i'm not gonna hurt you I want to answer a question, a common question from last week's video. Uh, in the comments, everyone was asking, where's your tool vest? And I did respond by saying that for electrical work, I have a dedicated electrical tool belt with suspenders. Um, I'll put the link to my suspenders in the description box. Um, I did a, a full video comparing tool vest to tool belt when I use each of them. They both have their place. Uh, the tool vest, you can't have, you can't wear 12 pounds of tools on a tool vest because you're gonna just compress your spine too much. You wanna wear the weight around your waist. Uh, I'll put a link to that video uh, in the little box that shows up on either side of my head here at the end of the video. This is the tripod that I use. Um, I do not use a cell phone. 
Um, they just have way too close of a uh, field of view uh, to be usable. I actually ha had to use this thing in a video I was filming a few days ago because I didn't have an SD card for the camera. Uh, and it came out horrible, but I'll make the best. The GoPro gives a nice wide angle view so that all my work is in the, the shot. Uh, and it's not like I'm, you know, right up real close to you. J-O-B-Y, Joby, something like that. Um, I did get a, I do have a cell phone holder for Instagram videos and Instagram pictures. There it is. My new work trailer toilet. My old one had been in there for years and I actually neglected the maintenance on it. So I upgraded. I got a brand new one. This is like a deluxe model. Holds five gallons of everything. You got two and a half gallons of flushing. And man, <laughs> may sound weird, but uh, one of my number one rules is never, never use your customer's bathroom. This keeps me on the job and does, keeps me from using their bathroom. This thing is pretty amazing. I've heard a lot of horror stories from past customers that they have had people come into their house and work and use their toilet and things didn't go well. So just stay out of their bathroom unless you're working on it and get yourself one of these, put it in your tool trailer um, and you save yourself a lot of headache. Now remember, only like this video if you want to see um, some of my business tips that have helped me increase the amount of money I make as a handyman. Also, if you're not a handyman, you're just curious, feel free to give that uh, like button a click also. Why am